Hey, what's poppin', y'all? It's the Mike Show. And for today's episode, I ain't even gonna stunt. I'm disappointed I even came across this information. One of the last people I would've ever thought I had to expose has been under investigation for snitching allegations for the last past 10 years now, man, let me tell you. Bay Area rap legend James Ratliff, AKA The Hustler, was known to rap alongside legendary rapper The Jacker and was a part of a legendary group, My Figures. But almost a decade ago, The Hustler's legacy began to be questioned. Rappers like AWACS and others began to expose him for rat allegations. The Hustler retaliated showing people paperwork, trying to clear his name, and the rumors eventually began to fade. Little did everybody know, the paperwork that James Ratliff was showing in the streets was not all of the documents from his federal case. On June 14th, 2001, calls between a man by the name of Raul Siha and Abdul Abusafe were wiretapped by the FBI. A confidential informer confirmed Siha was also known as Lucho. During the call, authorities listened to Siha and Abdul discuss Abdul purchasing an unknown amount of C. Y'all know what that is, from Siha. Over the next few days, Abdul and Siha planned to store 14 kilograms of C inside of a rental car's tire in Chicago that would later be driven by Abdul's friends, James Ratliff, a.k.a. The Hustler, and Aaron Punce, from Chicago to North Carolina. On June 27, 2001, the FBI set up surveillance at Midway Airport in Chicago. At 7.07 p.m., Siha and his cousin Garcia were seen driving around the airport in a black Mercedes registered to Siha. At 7.57, the FBI observed two subjects, James Ratliff, a.k.a. The Hustler, and Aaron Punce, renting a green rodeo from Alamo Car Rental. Garcia was later seen exiting Siha's vehicle and getting into a green rodeo with James Ratliff, a.k.a. The Hustler, and Aaron Punce. At 9.24 p.m., the vehicle was then seen arriving at 1606 Elliott Park Ridge, Illinois, then leaving the same location at 12.05 a.m. June 28, 2001. At 12.39 a.m., the Illinois State Police stopped the vehicle driven by Ratliff and Punce and obtained consent to search and recover 14 kilograms of C from the spare tire of the rental car. The C was later tested positive for C. Ratliff and Punce were detained and later released. On October 11th, 2001, the FBI issued arrest warrants to Raul Siha, Abdul Abusafe, Luis Garcia, Aaron Punce, James Ratliff, and by the end of the case, James Ratliff took a plea agreement. United States of America versus James Ratliff plea agreement. This plea agreement between the United States Attorney for the Northern District of Illinois and the defendant James Ratliff and his attorney John Theus is made pursuant to Rule 11 of the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure. This plea agreement is entirely voluntary and represents the entire agreement between the United States Attorney and the defendants regarding defendant's criminal liability in case 03CR403. Number five. Defendant will plead guilty because he is in fact guilty of the charge contained in the indictment. In pleading guilty, defendant admits, you hear me? Admits the following fact which establish his guilt and relevant sentencing facts beyond a reasonable doubt. Specifically, defendant Ratliff, aka Hustler, acknowledges that a short time prior to June 27, 2001, he and Aaron Punce received instructions from individual C to fly to Chicago and pick up 14 kilograms of C, y'all know what that is, y'all, from Jose Fernando Garcia, aka Lucho, and his drug organization. Come on, bruh. Damn. Damn. Now, Gunner took a plea deal, and the whole world turned on him for what he acknowledged. And do you acknowledge the following statement? Yes. Right? But, Big Bro, I'm going to tell you why I feel like it's ratting in his paperwork, though. You feel me? Specifically, defendant Ratliff, which is Hustler, acknowledges him and Aaron. You talking about another man's name, right? You and Aaron. You acknowledging you and Aaron. Went to go, was, was, got instructions to go do some illegal activity, right? You acknowledge that. 
You receive instructions from individual C, which we all realize is Abdul. Because earlier in the earlier in the paperwork, we realized who that is, right? Okay. You receive instructions instructions from individual C to fly to Chicago and pick up 14 kilograms of C from we all know what C is from Fernando Garcia, aka Lucho. Come on, bro. And his drug organization. You wouldn't so you acknowledging that a drug organization, it's a drug organization. We all know what a drug organization is, right? Okay. And then this your plea agreement though, bro. You got you got uh Jose Fernando Garcia's, aka Lucho, in your plea agreement. I'm gonna take y'all back early in the paperwork, right? So okay, look. If y'all can remember, a confidential informer identified a picture of Raul Siha as being Lucho. So that means earlier in the wiretap, when y'all first got on the phone, they never even knew who Lu they never even knew who Lucho was, bro. You feel me? Because they they thinking Lucho was Raul Siha. So hush, when you and Aaron got out there, you know what I'm saying, to go pick up what y'all was picking up on y'all way back, you get what I'm saying? Y'all got caught with them 14 kilograms in that spare tire. Y'all was detained, and then later on, y'all was released. You got caught with 14 kilograms of you know what, and y'all was detained, and then y'all was released. And this happened on June 28, 2001. June 28, 2001. Remember that, y'all. So, October 11, 2001, this four months later, they get a they get an arrest warrant, right? The feds get an arrest warrant. And in their arrest warrant is Raul Siha, Abdul, Luis Garcia, Aaron Punce, and James Ratliff. Ratliff. That's us. James Ratliff. Right? So remember that. Remember them names. This is the name that's in their arrest warrant. And this arrest warrant happens on October 11, 2001. Okay. So they get arrested on October 11, 2001, right? So remind you, Jose Fernando Garcia, a.k.a. Lucho, ain't nowhere on their arrest warrant. Meaning that, what? Well, lead me to guess, they ain't never have enough evidence on him at the time when y'all got y'all arrest warrant. Because if they would have had him on that wiretap and knew who he was, he would have been right with y'all. But he must be big dog. You get what I'm saying? He he must be who they really wanted the whole time, who everybody got the uh, uh, uh on. Because a year later, no, not even a year, 10 months later, if you pay attention to the work, bro, August 1st, 2002, which is 10 months later after, after hustle them go down, now all of a sudden, Jose Fernandez Garcia, a.k.a. Lucho, the real Lucho, now they know who he is. This, after, this, this 10 months after they go down, now they catch up with Lucho. Why he didn't go down to y'all arrest warrant if they if they was on him already? So now he get picked up 10 months later. So I'm trying to understand if he wasn't never on your, if they never knew who he was on y'all wiretap, they never knew who he was. Obviously, he didn't go down with y'all. You go down, he ain't on your arrest warrant. 10 months later after you go down, he go down. This is what your plea agreement say. Specifically, defendant Ratliff acknowledged that a short time prior to June 27, 2001, he and Aaron Punce received instructions from individual C to fly to Chicago and pick up 14 kilograms of C, which you all know what that is, from Jose Fernando Garcia, a.k.a. Lucho, the real Lucho and his real drug organization. Come on, bro. So you 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 telling this man you got a drug organization? You acknowledging that? And I'm trying to understand how all of a sudden is the real Lucho in your plea agreement. You acknowledging that you got instructions from individual C to fly to Chicago and pick up 14 kilograms of C from Jose Fernando Garcia, aka Lucho. That's your plea agreement, bro. He wasn't in your he wasn't in your arrest warrant. They didn't even know who he was when, when y'all was on the phone back then. But all of a sudden, y'all go down. And 10 months later, 
after y'all still sit off that domino effect, doing all that damn telling, he go down. You feel me? And he get his arrest warrant, and then he on your plea agreement. Come on, bro. Now, big bro. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Tell me this ain't your work. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You feel me? Uh, if if y'all don't feel like that's that's ratting, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Let me know. You get what I'm saying? But big bro, the most dangerous. You know, I see you being trolling on the internet, going places. Listen, bro. The most the most dangerous man on earth is a man that a challenge you to some gangster stuff in the streets. And when he get caught, he'll tell and take plea deals and throw you under the book. I don't, I don't want no type of street type of nothing. I, you can have that, bro. You can go run around neighborhoods on cameras acting like you look. I don't want no problems with somebody that's doing that type of stuff, big bro. I'm not even going to lie to you, bro. You can't be mad at me because I got some work in front of me and I'm calling it how I see it. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Call, call me on it. Tell me this ain't your stuff, bro. Tell me that. Or tell me, nah, bro, it didn't go like, like, explain. You can't get mad, but because I'm reading this paperwork. I'm reading, I'm reading what happened. This is different. My, my comprehension, like, this, 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 what I, this is how I'm looking at the situation, bro. I just, I just told you what I got and showed you what I got. So all that street stuff, you can calm down. You get what I'm saying? Because if you had this on me, when I look like getting mad, acting like I want a street problem, and I'm I'm showing you that I'm not making it up. As a real street, as a real street dude, you can't expect me to get something like this on my table and not call it how I see it, bruh. You get what I'm saying? You, you can't do that, bruh. And I could have been posted it. I just caught it how I seen it. It was going to leave it at that. I was wrong about something. Show me I'm wrong about something. But to me, bro, I'm calling it how I see it. All right, y'all. Now, this is how we going to end this. Let's talk that Fed talk now. Now, look at the top. We're going to go from page 38, 39, 40. Now, as you can see, y'all can read the work, though. But as you can say, I'm going to summarize it up. For your participation, the defendant requested a 5C1.2. You can Google 5C1.2. That's a safety valve, right? Y'all go look that up. In order to qualify for a safety valve, you have to meet all five requirements. Look at all five requirements, y'all. Now go to number five. What'd that say? That's how we're going to end this, bro. Now y'all make y'all decision. You feel me? Big bro, you wanted to call my bluff like you. Like, I didn't even want to do this. We could have just left it at where it was at. You feel me? But I don't see how you mad at me, bro, because I'm reading what I'm reading. You tell me what I'm reading is fake. I publicly apologize, big bro. Ain't no smoke. I don't, like, it's just at the end of the day, this the mic show. And this came across my table. You know what I'm saying? And you told me to post, post the paperwork. So that's what I did. All right. The mic show. So check this out, big bro. I seen it, the probation officer and then was talking about having you at a fish level, like what, 34? And that could have been 151 months to 188 months, which is like, what, like 12 and a half years to 15 and a half years. Then you start seeking reduction and for your participation, requested a safety valve. And if you would have got accepted for your safety valve, you would be qualified for be at a, like, what, a fish level 25? And that could be 57 months to like, what, 71 months? And that would be four and a half years to a little under six years and you know the less time you could have got for your safety valve is 57 months he got 55 months a little over four and a half years come on bro you got less time than your safety valve come on bro
I'm looking for a nine, that's top of the line. Shoot a face below the waist, that's a waste of time. I need a nine, that's top of the line. Shoot a face below the waist, that's a waste of time. Young niggas.